The next topic is charity. Joe, are you going for that? All this talk of family makes you a bit peckish, doesn't it? (laughs) 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 It's comic relief, right? Keep asking me if I'll go out to Africa, you know, to sort of comfort people. But how are they going to feel with me getting off the plane? (laughs) Hello! You're all hungry, are you? I've had a good dinner. And, you know, there are just there are huge problems to be tackled in Africa. I don't know if you know this, but actually in South Africa, you can insure yourself against getting raped because if you catch the HIV virus, treatment's really expensive. And what's that going to be like? You know, you're walking along, some bloke jumps out from behind a hedge, gets his ghoulies out, and you think, oh, Christ, there goes me no claims bonus. There. <laughs> Sit down, Joe, please. <laughs> OK, let's have another topic. The topic is crime. Who's coming in that? John. The most important thing to remember about crime is that any law only makes sense in context. Look at sport. Punching someone repeatedly in the face is lauded in boxing, but is seriously frowned upon in table tennis. (laughs) Similarly, if you come out of your corner in a boxing round bouncing a little ball on a bat, it's going to be literally seconds before you're staring at some lights. Furthermore, (laughs) Moses. Now, there's a man... There's a man who'd be on pretty much anyone's list of top five Jews, but think about it. When he led the children out of Israel, he was technically guilty of 3,000 counts of abducting a minor, bush arson, trespassing and abducting the sea. (laughs) And yet he walks free today. There really is no justice. (laughs) Well done, John. Very good. Sit down. Leaving us with two contestants. One topic we'll give you, fight it out, straight battle. What's the last topic this week? Ah, <laughs> uh, <coughs> Chirac, Europe, let's say. Uh, Hugh, do you want to go first? Britain isn't getting on very well with France at the moment, and it is partially because the French are a bit snooty. Uh, for example, take Concord. Do you know, in the original version of Concord, the French had their plane built with the front hinged the other way round, so it could turn its nose up when it landed <laughs> in the but the kind of um, the kind of European integration we don't any of us seem to mind is town twinning. Uh, everybody wants a French, you know, town to twin with. And I didn't know how it happened actually until I recently went to Swindon, uh, met a bloke from Swindon Council. He told me that apparently it's very like getting a teenage pen pal, <laughs> on the basis that Swindon was getting on very well with Monte Carlo <laughs> until they sent them a photograph and never heard from them again. <laughs> very good, very good. Welcome to you. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> what? It is a head-to-head. Uh, Al, on the topic of Europe. Uh, well, of course, the, what's happened here is the French... <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> the French have voted against Europe and now expect us to cough up for it. <laughs> it's the classic example of the French attitude. They've lost the plot, basically, completely. I mean, these are people with a town called Brest and none of them think it's funny. <laughs> In any other country, a melted cheese would be regarded as a f up, wouldn't it? <laughs> they're up to something, aren't they? <laughs> no, they're up. Well, I'm not done yet. <laughs> Staying over there with their own customs. The point is, I think. <laughs> I mean, that, that Eiffel Tower is a tragic waste of Meccano, isn't it? As a result. <laughs> French boys have nothing to play with except themselves, and that's how it started, isn't it? (laughs) Uh, Al, thank you very much. Al Murray, give us a round of applause. Tough to say, I'm giving it to you, I'm giving it last time. Sit down, both of you.